Now we're going to give a demonstration on how the power stabilizer actually works and will save you money on your power bill. As you can see here, this is a typical dryer motor. It's a motor that's represented in uh, all the household appliances, your refrigerator, your dryer, your washer, your air conditioner, all the, and your furnace, all the typical uh, motors that you have in your house. This over here is the power stabilizer unit and the rest of it is just a demonstration board to show how it works with a motor. This is a, uh, a meter. It's going to read the amount of amps consumption of the motor when we turn it on and amps times volts equals watts. This is a 120 watt or 120 volt system so the amps times the volts will equal the watts and that'll equal the watt reduction. We get charged on how many kilowatts we consume in our homes so if we reduce the amount of watts we reduce our power bill. So we're going to start by turning the motor on and you can see the motor running there and you can see it's pulling 4.6, 4.58, 4.6 amps of power. Okay, we're going to continue to watch the unit, watch the, the meter. We're going to turn the power stabilizer on. You're going to see a reduction in amps. Remember, amps times volts equals watts consumed. We're going to turn the unit back off and you're going to see it go back up. 4.5 and we're going to turn the unit back on one more time. And you're going to see a reduction in amps once again. You can see the motor still operating. And we'll do it once again with in a panned out view so you can see me turn the switch off and you can see the load go up. We're going to turn the switch back on and you can see the load go back down. So once you have this hooked up to your house you're immediately saving hundreds of dollars a year on your power bill. Materials needed to put together a power stabilizer device. As you can see, we got everything from Home Depot here. We have one six by six by four power box. We have two coils of wire. Uh, you can get the wire in uh, smaller lengths. We build a lot of these, so we have uh, a couple coils of wire. As you can see, we have some connectors to connect the wire to. We have an elbow the wire comes out of the bottom of the box on. We have an EMT 2-inch conduit clamp. And we have one bolt with nut. Also we have uh, two super capacitors that power the unit. Now we're going to drill the hole in the back of the box for the bolt Okay, now we're going to drill a hole in the two inch clamp. And this is going to be our bracket that holds our two super capacitors in place. As you can see, we have a corresponding hole. Okay, now we're going to install a hole for the optional light. These are available through our website. 
they, it is not necessary to install the light but it lets you know that the unit is working once it's plugged in so like I said this is the optional light we're going to drill the hole for the optional light As you can see now we have a hole for our optional light but once again it's not necessary but if you do want one they are available from our website to purchase now we're going to drill a hole for the elbow in the bottom of the unit As you can see, fits right in the bottom of the unit. As you can see, we'll need two small wires at six inches. And we're going to need three larger wires at 36 inches or three feet, positive, negative, and a ground. As you can see we've crimped the ends of the wires and the green ones get a crimping on each end of the wire. The red ones get a crimping only on one end of the wire and the long green one gets a different type of fitting that fits the bolt. And we used a simple crimper that you can get over at the hardware store for around three or four dollars. Okay, now we're gonna show how to wire the power stabilizer or wire the super capacitors. Uh, we are going to use the light in our wiring demonstration, which is available through our website and the super capacitors these are also available through our website if you can't find them they are available online but they're just hard to find these two items everything else is available at home depot or lowe's we're going to start with the super capacitors wiring and we're going to start by going left back to left back And then the next wire is going to be right back to right back. Okay, now we're going to wire the leads that go into your breaker box. And that's going to be outside left to outside right. Okay, now we're going to wire the light to the unit and the light goes on just one of the super capacitors and that's going to be front side left to front side right and that's how your super capacitor should look after you're done wiring remember that we did use the optional light in our wiring demo it is not mandatory that you use this light okay now we're going to show an assembly of the power stabilizer unit and as you can see here's all the parts that we need in order to put the unit together Okay, to start, we're going to place the bolt through the back side of the power box that we built, that we drilled.
And now we're going to place the elbow, the 90 degree elbow, into the box through the hole that we drilled. And we're going to fasten it down. Just like so. Okay, now we're going to place our wires through the elbow inside the box. As you can see they come right through. We're going to do the same with the pre-wired super capacitors. And I like to do them both together at the same time. You want to lay the super capacitors down inside the unit and bend your wires until everything fits. Like so. Okay, now we're going to put our clamp and it's inverted. So it'll hold both of the super capacitors at the same time. As you can see, our little hole that we drilled in it lines up with the bolt. Okay, we've placed our clamp bracket to hold the super capacitors in place. Now we need to hook our ground wire up. To the unit. And secure it with our nut. And we'll tighten it up from the back. Okay, now we're going to place the light through the cover hole. it down and then put the unit together 